what we're about to hear confirms what Disney is actually angling to achieve. But I also want children to see LGBTQ content. Don't you agree? What? What? When when O'Keefe started saying that, he met him on the dating app. I really thought the next word I would put $100 would have been great. Let's get into the third guy. You'll recall Mocker also talks about Disney's over-the-top insistence on jamming woke storylines and out-of-place diversity characters in places they clearly don't fit creatively. Which now brings us to Disney Tapes Volume 3. From classic Disney princesses to drag queens. The trans formation of children's programming at the Walt Disney Company is in full effect. This was a Disney Plus featured entry. Okay, so just to establish that to be clear. Here now let's meet Disney's creative marketing director, Jeannie Giornani. By day, Jeannie is Disney's creative marketing director. And by night, he's a professional drag queen. According to his LinkedIn page, Jeannie is a Berkeley grad and has a variety of jobs, including working at Netflix and Vice Media. So what exactly does creative marketing director Jeannie Giornani do at Disney? Just real quick, you could have stopped at Vice Media. That's all I would have needed to know. I'm right there. I know Ron knows what I'm talking about. I mean, that was, well, that, that, that's enough right there. Dez's focus is on creative strategy across all Disney's television brands. So what do you do at Disney? Creative marketing director, right? Marketing director. So, I, what, yeah, what is that? Um, I'm, marketing, I'm a director of a marketer for two uh, lots of electric brands, but yeah. I started on creative brand, which is young adult, young adult TV brand. Yeah. And I was leading social media on that brand, so did all these things for a year. Yeah. Well, a bunch of stuff to, to lead there. With you. So, put together most of these. We set up and set up. We then I switched over to uh, create a strategy for us. I met Jeannie on the dating app Bumble and managed to score a date <laughs> with the drag queen. I swear, when, when O'Keefe started saying that, he met him on the dating app. I really thought the next word I would have put $100 would have been grinder. I, but it I, was, I, did I you was think positive this, that's what he was going to say. I right, thank you. I was about to say, I'm like, please, if he says grinder, I'm, I'm going out of the chair. I'm on the floor. <laughs> he said, I just want to be too firm. Yeah, he said bumble, not far off. <laughs> Let's look deeper into his drag queen credentials. Apparently, there is an elite grouping of high profile drag queens such as Daikon and Tiffany Rose that Jeannie associates with. According to Jeannie, he is a judge and the president of the jury for the AICP Awards show that, according to its website, honors marketing and communications in motion image, an award show that is big in the drag queen mentorship community. And according to Jeannie, he has been able to leverage his status as a prominent drag queen to bolster his personal brand, getting him appointments like his position at the AICP Awards show and moving him up the ladder at Disney. What's what's the award show called? It's like AIC. AICP. It's like the very cool. It's all the people in the room with me are the industry lights. Can can you give me a name? Oh, like Umar. It's very cool. Like Greg Hahn and Tiffany Rowe. What's their name? Now that we've established that Genie is heavy into drag, let's take a look at how Genie is operating over at Disney as a creative head for them. Jeannie speaks to our undercover journalist stating he has a four to five month project that will allow an LGBTQ pride campaign to grow across Disney television. So again, I, I know people are watching this and they're thinking, okay, Valiant, we, we kind of knew all this. I, I keep reminding folks, if this, this, these videos that, that James O'Keefe is dropping, it's not for us per se. Yeah. It's for everybody else out there who really doesn't know. 
And there's millions and millions and millions of people out there that do not know this stuff. And on top of that, what we're about to hear confirms from the inside, in, in fairly plain language, um, what Disney, or at least what their, their more senior level marketing teams, like this guy here, is actually angling to achieve. Jeannie Giornani, the creative marketing director at Disney, was asked about allowing LGBTQ content to be shown to children. Jeannie agreed that he wants children to see the content and that it is, quote, the unspoken thing. But I despise those kind of people that want to accuse of Disney of children. Like, Okay, he despises people that think that Disney wants to broom children. Just remember what he said right there, because just like an episode of The Acolyte, it's about to change on a dime five seconds later for no reason. But I also want children to see LGBTQ content. Don't you agree? <laughs> what? What? I mean, it's okay. Um, which is it? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, that's the yeah, spoken thing. Drag queen Jeannie was more than excited to discuss how Disney is ramping up their LGBTQ promotion at parks, content, and entertainment, stating that Disney is doing Pride Nights all by themselves without third parties involved and that it is, quote, a big step. I'm just going to tell you that I took my grandma and that they just started doing these Pride Nights. Like, last year was the first one. Now, this, I did not know this, or at least I really wasn't completely aware of this. And I think this is key, what he's about to say, uh, about how Disney in the past uh, was working a lot with third parties. And we've covered that. We've covered the fact that Disney for two years uh, was a platinum sponsor, and I'm sure they'll renew, with uh, Out and Equal, which bills themselves as the largest LGBTQ political action conference uh, on planet Earth, I think, or at least in the United States. Uh, and Disney has done huge in-kind donations to them by way of discounted or free park tickets, room and board. They, they host their big conventions at Disney World in Orlando. I think they did for 23, and they're doing one again in 24. I think they're usually around September. So that's, that's a third-party linkage, right? Somebody comes in, asks Disney for help, but now he's saying Disney is taking it one step further. Before this, every private event was uh, third party in partnership with Disney. Like, sure. You know, like they bring in and Disney would help. But now Disney's doing it themselves. So it's a, it's a big step. There you go. So now Disney is basically taking the initiative from the inside to do more of this, to push more of this. And like this guy says, you know, it's kind of unspoken. I mean, we don't like it when people accuse us of. of grooming children uh but we sure do want to expose children to as you know as much as possible because hey that's real life right that's what we want to represent everybody to children uh to which i keep coming back to it's funny you know a couple of one two three generations ago the population that identified in that vein was one two to three percent now all of a sudden you got gen z and millennials identifying 20 to 30 percent that way i wonder why that is uh you know it's this is a chicken and the egg situation uh where okay we we want to represent everybody we want to expose kids to this because it's out there well it's it's out there more prevalently because you keep trying to expose children at younger and younger and younger ages to this uh, no, I mean, this is what I've come to expect from Disney. I think we all know we, well, I mean, I, and like you said, this isn't for us, really. This is for the masses, mm -hmm. but we, we've known this, that this is their agenda, yeah. that this is what they're trying to do. And it's obvious to all of us who've been paying attention. I just would say something I've said on the show before, Valiant, which is that mm -hmm. it may very well be a sort of real life for mm -hmm. a certain percentage of people. Mm -hmm. Sure. But we're skipping over a, a logical step here, which is why are children being exposed to sexualized content at all? Heterosexual yes. or homosexual. So then you mm -hmm. respond, well, Ron, there are moms and dads 
no, you know, uh, hetero moms and dads in, in, you know, in Alice in Wonderland and, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. So we, we have to balance that out, right? Answer, no. Because moms and dads are how, oh, that's where babies come from. Yeah. Th that's, that's how families come into existence. We're, and we're not talking about moms and dads' sexuality as such. Right. Do people, do children watch this stuff and then want to, you know, does that make them think about their own sexuality in, in, in you know, in, in, in a way that they otherwise might not? Probably, yes. But the point is, it's making them think about their sexuality. That in and of itself is not something that's normal and healthy for children at, at the developmental stage that Disney is aiming its content at. That's the problem. We're not trying to deny reality. We're trying right. to keep things age appropriate. That's yeah, the problem. I, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, if Netflix tomorrow, uh, you know, came out with a, a show about drag queens, I, I don't think. I mean, people would go like, "Oh, good lord, roll their eyes or whatever." But no, <laughs> no, no, nobody, nobody, nobody would complain like this about it because it's a Netflix show that's not being marketed to children. Um, and, and that's the big difference. And I think, I think, I think you're right on that one. When asked by our OMG undercover journalist if he would authorize drag queens to be present at Disneyland, where children are, mind you, Genie the Drag Queen said, well, he would love to, and it will happen at some point. So, for the drag, like any creative marketing director, am I going to see a drag queen at, at Disneyland or anything like that? Do you want to do that? Get get a drag queen at Disneyland. Yeah. That'd be cool. That would be cool. Yeah. I'm sure that would definitely. Remember, this is a man that is directly impacting what children watch, interact with online, and experience in person through Disney's TV, films, and theme parks. So you might say drag queens. What's the big deal? I know there's little babies here, but close your ears. <laughs> well, it has been widely reported on multiple instances where the normalization of drag queens pushed. And remember, the videos he's showing here, these are the really tame ones. These are the, we've all seen the videos floating around, especially in the last 30 days on social media, of what some of these folks are doing at these, you know, so called family friendly parades. Uh, where they're riding around completely naked with everything hanging out, like last week's or this week's episode of House of the Dragon. Uh, no shrinkage, no shrinkage in evidence is what you're no, saying. No, no, none. Uh, just, just parading it in front of children, shaking it in front of children. Ten to fifteen years ago, I'd say everywhere in the country, the, you'd be arrested on the spot. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, for for indecency, for 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 public indecency. I mean, it's just, I now. Because if you're a certain way and you're expressing your repressed true self and you're doing it during the right month um, and you have the right politics, you can just do it right in front of kids all the time now. And you, you tell me this is not, like Ron said, this is about sexualizing children. This is about making them think about sexuality. And we're talking about this happening in front of kids like you can see here. We're talking about kids that are like five, six, seven, eight years old. In a lot of cases, it's just it's absolutely disgusting behavior and an end has to be put to all of this on children through such means as drag queen story hour and schools and children's programming is being used. Again, this, that is a Disney Plus show right there. What you're looking at, that is a that is a look at the Disney Plus logo and look at the dress that, that this is wearing. It's got all the Mickey Mouse things on it with the pride Mickey Mouse uh, ears. This is on. Disney Plus is to radicalize and sexualize children. Now, these other clips like this, I want to make clear are not as far as I'm concerned. But when you see, you'll notice what is on Disney Plus has that Disney Plus logo at the bottom. O'Keefe made sure you knew which clips were which. Wait, so what was that valiant? The, 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 the previous screen with the orange hair, the pink flaming pink. This um, right here. Um, I don't remember exactly what this show was. I remember we talked about this was months ago uh, where they had a, a drag thing that was connected to Disney, an LGBTQ-themed thing, and this was on Disney+. Plus. And they're, imagine what it is. I mean, they're basically talking to kids. I mean, this was something that was general audiences on Disney+, Plus, right? Um, 
I'd have to go by. I can't remember the name of it, Ron, right now. Uh, but I do remember. Hey, I'm, not, I'm not looking to watch it. <laughs> I'm just, yeah. I'm just <laughs> I, you know, I'm just, I was curious about the context that, that uh, in which it was. Televised. Somebody in the chat might remember. Um, Somebody in the chat that might remember what this show was. I, I, it's, it's been a, it's been a few months. I remember discussing this, and I'll be darned if I can remember, if I can remember what exactly this was specifically tied to, or what the name of this thing was. Uh, if Pro were here, he might remember this, but I, I, or John Trent would probably remember this. After Disney's debacle, where just last year Disney World Park employee Paul Veal was arrested and charged with over 900 counts of child, you find it surprising that Disney would even come close. And he wasn't the only one, Michelle. There have been a number found there. Now, again, it's a big, it's a big company. It's got lots and lots of employees, you know, tens of thousands of employees in Florida alone. Uh, no company out there is immune to having this happen to them. But again, it's not Especially lost. Especially no company that hires as many people with these proclivities. <laughs> well, that's that's just it. It's it's just a. Um, it's an extra feather in the cap, I guess, that uh, it just keeps happening to Disney. Close to doing anything that could be remotely seen as the sexualization of children. So back to Jeannie. Would you allow someone that so blatantly promotes these types of hypersexualized techniques to babysit your children? Likely not. So why would Disney, supposedly a children's brand, hand the reins of programming and promotion power over to a man like Jeannie? Is the power of the DEI movement so strong that Disney would risk the safety and mental health of your children to submit to their woke demands? Promoting drag queens is probably one genie Disney should have kept in the bottle. <laughs> Let us know what you think in the comments below and stay tuned for our upcoming reports. We have many sources coming to us inside Disney. America First Legal putting out a letter, EEOC complaint, and sign up to be an... Yeah, and the EEOC complaint from America First Legal, I believe, was a renewal of their prior request from a couple of months ago. It was they posted it on they posted it on X, I think, yesterday. Uh, and I looked because O'Keefe was saying, "Oh, look here," and I was like, "Okay, that's the same one that they that they sent in a few months ago when they said um, uh, the EEOC complaint about." Uh, Disney's discriminatory hiring practices or alleged discriminatory hiring practices. So uh, that's what he was referring to there. And as he mentioned, like we said earlier, more people are coming forward right now uh, to him, to O'Keefe Media Group, to bring more stories. So I'm sure this probably isn't the last we've heard of it. And as we've seen in the last week or two since all of this began, even Elon Musk is retweeting on this. And you know Musk has been keeping his eyes on Disney uh, because I think he's just having too much fun with him right now. Um, well, but also, you know, I think it's very clear. Musk is really very, very heavily dedicated to heterosexuality. He's really made a personal stake in making a major stand towards repopulating the world with as many women as possible. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you're subscribed to Valiant Renegade and join us every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern for the live show.